I cannot believe it. It's done. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. That's right, I think Gibson might have fixed their website. It's either that, or after last week's big debacle. People didn't show up for this week, but right on the dot, regular upload time. Everything was here. I could refresh the page. It instantly did it. Wasn't waiting 10, 20, 15, 30, half hour for these things just to show up. I'm kind of sad. It was less of a hunt, but I'm also very elated at the same time. But we'll have to see if that was just a fluke. Let's get into this week's offerings. All right, we'll start things off with a boring black Les Paul studio, or at least that's what I thought it was. Until I read the rest. Ink, stripe, sparkle. What? Just looks black to me, but let's really zoom in here. Okay, we've got some Smash Bro symbols going on here. And you can see, yeah, it does have some sparkles. Honestly, this looks very cheap and not very nice. But then we've got a back shot. All right, apparently there's even more stripes on this thing. But allow me to adjust the contrast here. <laughs> <laughs> they like basically Eddie Van Halen this thing out, you know, it's kind of like the Frankenstrat. Learn all about that thing right here. I did the custom shop super recreation one. That'd be my best guess where they were trying to go with this. Now it just makes me want to see a real version come out of Gibson. Like people have done it before. Phil X did this awesome SG up. I would have never guessed mixing that with an SG, but it turned out fantastic. But at the time of recording, this one's still available if it does pique your interest for a considerable premium. SG Tribute Worn Brown is the next one to talk about. Honestly, nothing too fancy about this one. It's just a worn brown body and they put brown pick guard on it with the aged hardware. It looks pretty nice though. But we've just got the gold and silk screen on the headstock and nothing else too fancy. And a back that looks like this. 60 Standard Unburst had an interesting top. Not only an interesting top, but they added a golden Bixby to it. They even have jewels on our golden knobs. And golden pickup ring toppers. Definitely blinged out. Following that up is a Walnut 335. This pulls off the aged hardware really good and the pull pieceless pickups. It just gives it a whole different vibe. And I like how the knobs match the finish here. I feel this one needs tinted lacquer though because the headstock looks so bright when the rest of the guitar is very rustic looking. But certainly an interesting normal one. Speaking of interesting, hey look, we've got a 63 SG special. Now can you guys tell me, why did this make it to the demo shop? All right, time's up. They put standard inlays on it instead of the dots, which I think is really cool. It works great with this. Kind of reminds me of like the Brian Ray SGs. But on top of that, this is an aged Pelham Blue. You can tell it's nice and green in the cutaways right here. And you've got the Murphy Labs aging on it. Now, do I think that was a mistake? Probably not. I bet this was a custom order that, uh-oh, something didn't quite work out on. So they had to make it again. However, if we actually read the description, it says the modifications consist of a 64 neck on a custom shop 63 Murphy Lab light age body. Unless the mod collection guys are really playing Frankenstein over here, which would be really cool, to be honest. I doubt they actually made that mod. I think that's just something that accidentally happened or was custom ordered like that. Hey Gibson, here's a good idea. Hire a video guy and document them modifying these guitars. I think people would love to see the behind the scenes. I bet that would be a big watch. This one's a bit spooky. Glass Ghost Satin. It's probably a reference I'm not familiar with, but it appears we have a clear acrylic pick guard. Who knows, maybe it's actually glass, doubt it. And then just the most beautiful natural 335 I've ever seen. Ultra wide wood grain on this. That is quite the nice plain top. I really like the clear knobs. This has a more angelic look to me rather than ghosty. And the back has a very similar vibe. Definitely needs a maple neck. And now everybody's favorite, Hang 10 Green again. Maybe it looks better in person. I mean, it's a modified studio. But why does this deserve the original modified Gibson decal? It's not special at all. It's just a custom color. Just as that surfing finish, we also saw the return of Saddle Brown Sparkle, this time in a 70s Flying V flavor. Okay, I'll give it to him on this one. We've got another clear pick guard, which looks really cool right here. It reminds me of the see-through technology of like the 2000s era and in prison stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I hope Gibson does that for like a PCB guitar because then that would be cool for the models that already use the PCB wiring systems anyways. This is definitely one of those ones probably need to see it in person because you can tell this goes from dark brown to a light brown. But the big question, is it a matching headstock? Doesn't look like it, but I could be wrong. And now for my favorite one this week, Translucent Cherry Amber Les Paul Classic. Look at this thing. What does it remind you of? 
It reminds me of a Gretsch White Penguin, just in red format. So I guess maybe the Gretsch Red Penguin. Let's look at one of those. You've got a Bigsby, you've got Filtertron style pickups. They're slightly less Paul-like in shape, but not exactly the same. Then you swap back over here. You kind of see what I'm talking about, because not all of them have Bigsby. Sometimes they will have some sort of a trapeze tailpiece, similar to like what you see right here. And then the pickups here, they have the adjustable row and the slug coils exposed with these style pickup covers that it just plays that whole part. I think that's what this person was going for. I really like the tortoiseshell truss rod cover too. That looks nice. You've also got that on your back plates. Moving on, 57 ultralight gold top. What, what is going on there? Whoa. Did they put EMGs on that? And then put the radiator style pickup covers? That's strange. There's no pole pieces. What did they do there? Mods consist of gold hardware, aged, Bigsby B7, T-type pickups with gold radiator covers, and tortoise inserts. Ah. So, you're going to see a tortoise shell reflection. Interesting. I don't think I've seen them do that before. Then the back looks like that, with the matching plates. Seems like they had a couple of sheets of that stuff to use up. Here's a blubbery burst. This one, I had a hard time telling. Does that have gold pickup covers and the rest is blacked out? Or am I just seeing things? This SG, they modify the pickups and our pick guard. We had an interesting ice tea fade Les Paul reissue. I generally don't like the fade finishes, but that top with that color works well. The back's not half too bad either. The SG tribute this week was done up in midnight armor, which is a really cool dark blue metallic finish. And if you zoom in here, it says rock and roll. <laughs> Once again, having both of the coils exposed. It is a full refinish and they were proud of it because it got the decal. Wow, that thing's from 2013. But I fully endorse this one. It's a little bit crazier and cooler than the other one that got it this week. And our last one was a studio in espresso satin. 1600's not too bad if you wanted a three pickup variation from the factory. But you've got the Rhythm Pro in the neck, 498T in the bridge, and another 498T in the middle position. So kind of a cool week, nothing really crazy crazy, but a few nice pieces. Let's see what the demo shop has to offer us. Surprisingly, they have not been selling these things too well. At the time of recording, they had only sold three items this entire week. To be fair, I pulled all these up on Thursday at 3 p.m., so they've probably sold some more since then. But we did have a couple of golden gooses. Check this out. Warm Sky exclusive custom paint in Les Paul. A little under $5,000. This blue has many a different color flakes in it. So I'm seeing a little bit of red, some yellow, some green. I bet that looks awesome in person. You've got the white knobs. They put the gray pickup rings on it, all blacked out pickups, blacked out hardware. It's kind of a whole mess of colors, but it works. I was kind of tempted by this one, but ultimately I just thought, nah, not quite, not quite. Maybe if I could see it in person, but I feel like it needed a little bit more blingage on the headstock. But I can tell that is going to be a cool finish in person. So congratulations to whoever picks this thing up. I'm curious if it's sold yet. Wow, still there. There's a 339 figured. I just thought it looked nice. Wanted to share it with you. Here's a really rare one. So 60th anniversary 61 SGs. I've done videos on the custom and the standard. You can check those out here. But this was a custom ordered black one with ultra light aging, which aging didn't exist for this anniversary run model. And black was not a color offered unless you asked somebody to custom order it. I know there was a dealer towards the end that did a few custom colors. This is an example of a guitar that could potentially be valuable in the future. Like if somebody is collecting these types of things and they're like, hey, I need one of every color. This is a weird random color. I need it in my collection. It looks quite snazzy. I really love the golden knobs there. However, my thought process behind this is I think these dings were accidental and then they're like, ah, let's just age it. <laughs> And speaking of cool SGs, look at this one. Three pickup standard in the double gold finish. This is throwing me off and not having a pick guard's throwing me off, but if you could just add that and do it all in cream, that would look sweet. However, at the same time, the black has a certain vibe to it as well. It's kind of like gold tops. They look good with cream and they look different and good with the black as well. Here's one of those exclusive olive drab flying Vs. Very sloppy paintwork around the neck, but the biggest one was, ooh. Ugly, ugly finish check down there, but I think they're gonna have to discount that one a little bit more personally. This access custom, we see them every single week, but I think this is the most uniformed looking one that we've ever seen here. Like it's not book matched, but normally these have really abnormal figuring patterns, but this one, very pinstripey. So great if you like that. 
We got another Candy Apple Blue 335, this time of a 64 reissue variant. You got those little mini blocks here, and the cream plastic works great with that finish. Front and back. This bad boy is 6,000 bucks. It was ultra heavy aged. These black double cut juniors, they look so good when they've been aged. Now, relic versus actual wear and tear, I'll leave that up to you, but ebony finish just always looks great when it's heavily worn. Now this one, it's a bit too worn in my opinion, but you know, it, it is what it is. There was actually a collector's choice of one of these. I believe it was the Dave Hinson model, if I remember correctly. Yes, indeed. Looks like I did a old rocker knot on that, number 48. So apparently the story goes is there were very few of those actually made back in the late 50s in this custom color. So that's what that whole collector's choice reissue is based on. If I'm going to review one of those, I want it to be that collector's choice. Because at least then it has like some signature guitar phenomenons going on. Now, it was back when it was just in-house aging. However, Murphy Labs is basically just a rebranding of that, and now you have the master at the helm trying to help train these people. I wouldn't say this aging looks particularly great on this example, but hey, it's part of Gibson history. Oh, and that's the aging prototype. Cool. That reminds me of the Kazuyoshi Saito one that I used to own. That was a cool guitar. Another 335 for your liking. This time in, once again, double gold. Seeing a lot of double double golds. Oh. I wonder what dealer that was for. This Flying V also has a story. Poor Gibson with their all white finishes. Ooh, ugly checking right there. And then a pretty bad one right there around the nut. Now none of that looks like it would hurt the guitar, but you know, they're there. So if you missed out on the original price of these before things got a little bit crazier, <laughs> you can get it. And now this one, I was all excited to tell you guys about this because this was the coolest thing that I wish I could have bought. But that was before I realized that Custom Shop SG kind of stole its thunder. So this is a Gibson USA SG Special. But look at that neck again. They messed up. <laughs> they, they gave it trapezoid inlays, but this time the neck is right. Or they just put the wrong neck on and maybe the headstock veneering process comes later. I'm not sure. But this is definitely a factory mess up here. And had I had saw this, I probably would have bought this one for review and documentation because I love factory errors like that. That's just cool. Let's see what their description says. It just says trapezoid inlays. But I know for a fact it's a mess up and not a modification because this would originally had dots and they would not be covered over by a trapezoid if you try to route it in there. So yeah, that's a factory goofy. These things are 1600 brand new, even at a discount and you're upgrading? Man, I wish I could have got that. That was cool. So that's everything stateside. We've got the European demo shop if you're interested in that. They did update this week and they had some interesting stuff, mainly players grade. But here's the six that were most interesting. We had the Les Plus. I just found it interesting that we're still trying to burn through all the 2015 guitars here, <laughs> seven years later. We're getting close, we're getting close. This Firebird Custom, I mean, we talk about them all the time, but that's a good price for that market. They also had a Custom Shot 58 Junior on their side, this time in TV Yellow. Again, not a bad price for one of those in that particular market, if you want a Custom Shop Junior slash Special. Here was another steal of a deal, a 60s tribute, 924, including all taxes and shipping. This has got to be gone when I refresh the page, right? What? You guys are sleeping on this over in Europe. What are you guys doing? That's a steal. You will never be able to get that price again over there. Especially when this one looks pretty darn clean for one of the demo shop ones. It wouldn't be an episode without a triple double gold. So we've got this one to share with you. And then lastly, an Ebony Custom. I thought it was an okay price. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.